Thank you, Lisa. Um, as some of you know, some of you may not know, um, I am very engaged in public theology. When I retired and I moved to Colorado, I started writing for the local paper, the Vail Daily. And as somebody in the neighborhood said, they never knew what hit them. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I wrote a column called Acknowledge Grief and Loss, and Lisa read it and uh, it got a huge response uh, from a lot of people, both locally and you know, nationally, even actually internationally. And I started out by talking about my friend, uh, Cheryl Townsend Jilks, a professor of African American Studies at Colby College. She has team taught with me at CTS actually many times. And Cheryl contacted me because she was about to do her first Zoom funeral. And it is appropriate that today we are thinking about President Ray and about the funeral of his father. Uh, it is also appropriate that today it is likely that we will cross 100,000 deaths from COVID-19 and indivisible and other groups uh, around the country are carrying body bags. Uh, right now, they're carrying body bags in Washington toward the Capitol. But I thought about all this loss. We are awash in loss. And yet the struggle is over even counting the loss. The flags at half mast, no. And yet we've lost two and a half Vietnams in a matter of months, not a matter of two decades. When the Vietnam War Memorial was dedicated, a whole lot of us read the names in the National Cathedral and it took half the night. How long would it take for us to read the names of everyone who has died? It would take days, days. We have 25 times the number of people we lost at 9-11. Not, you know, just universal statistics. Okay, in Wisconsin, African-Americans are 6% of the population, but they are 40% of the deaths, 40%. In Louisiana, African-Americans are 32% population, but 60% of the deaths. Kansas, again, 60% of the population, 34% of the deaths. Why aren't we acknowledging the deaths? They are so disproportionate. And in fact, now there's just outright lying about the number of deaths. We'll say there's 100,000 deaths, but ensure it is much larger. So, in the absence, national mourning, flags at half mass, the pretense that as a nation we are losing essential parts of the population, we are on our own, I wrote. Like the governors, find your own PPE, find your own ventilators. You know what? Find your own mourning. And we have to do that. We have to do that. And it's not just death. Right? It's not just death. The economic losses are horrific. Would you like to be one of the people graduating this spring in terms of finding a job, keeping a job, having people care about your economic future? All this premature opening will surely bring, as Dr. Bright, again, someone else who told the truth in the administration and got uh, demoted and then fired, the darkest winter. So not our, are we, we're not through this. We have possibly barely begun. So we see the pictures of people dressed up in, you know, carrying guns around, protesting, wanting to open. And I began to think about that as a peculiar form of grief. 
you know, it is patently ridiculous that you would carry a gun to make it possible for you to actually contrast, contract a virus faster. Do you look at the population? I mean, yeah, this is funded by the right wing. Yeah, the Koch brothers are in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but people, a lot of things can be going on at the same time. These are the people who are promised. You'll have health care. You'll have great jobs. We'll come back and on and on and on. And they got, not only didn't get that, they've lost a great deal of what they were hanging on to. And so they blame everybody but the one who promised them. Nonetheless, it is the ugly face of grief. Grief can be extremely ugly. This to me is the very definition of Greek tragedy. In Greek tragedy, you know, something catastrophic happens and overwhelming circumstances combine with individual and personal failing. And you have tragedy. That's tragedy. Tragedy is circumstances and people screw up. And we got that. We got that big time. This is an American tragedy. Now, the thing about Christianity is it's trans tragic, all right? Except for the Christians who just hippity hop right over Good Friday and go right to Easter and bunnies and chocolate and so forth. But in truth, Christianity can deal with tragedy, but not without the specifics of the loss. Isn't just generally tragic? It is that those deemed it, how ironic is it that those deemed essential African-Americans, Latinx, people on the front lines, my own niece, my own son, doctor, nurse, are the ones that are most at risk. The essential are most at risk. So we are both simultaneously saying that by and large, racial ethnic minorities in this country are essential and we don't want to pay attention to their sacrifice. It's not only tragic, it's immoral. Yes, but you know, <laughs> grief and loss don't go away. It just doesn't go away. I mean, I was thinking about how it just hangs around. My sister and I always talk on the anniversary of my mother's birthday. She died 49 years ago when I was, when we were young. And we were reminiscing about how funny she was. She's the funniest person I ever met. And I got hit with this pang after the call, 49 years. But, you know, grief and loss are just floating around in the zeitgeist. Every loss is magnified. It's hooked all the grief and everyone we talk to. There's nobody, even those who are going, no, oh, no, no, I'll just drink some bleach and I'll be fine. It's not going to work. So what I did was I looked up Dow Edgerton's work. Because if you teach at CTS, one of the great benefits is that you'll learn a lot from the colleagues. And I have learned a lot from Dow about grief. And in his book, Listening to Grief, he said, you know, pay attention, pay attention, listen to grief. It is telling you stuff. And he writes, listening to grief and acknowledging it is not easy. Human beings express grief in ways that are contradictory, muddled, ugly. Grief can express itself through thoughts and feelings that seem utterly contradictory. Love that sounds like fear. Pain that sounds like joy. Doubt that sounds like faith. Arguments that sound like prayers. Prayers that sound like earthquakes. And yes, that sounds like no. A listener can be overwhelmed. I'm telling you, friends, I have over and over been overwhelmed at times by the grief and loss. 
of friends and family. We've not lost anybody in our immediate family, but family can be It is difficult and sometimes even enraging to listen to grief. When I see a heavily armed protester spinning rage, it makes me furious. Is it grief? At least some of it. Yet grief that will give a deadly disease to potentially to the bus driver who brought him <clears throat> to this demonstration. Doubt sounds like faith. I have had people say to me, I know why God sent the coronavirus. <laughs> and no, and no, 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 no. God does not send viruses to teach you stuff, to punish you, or just having a bad day. That doesn't work theologically. What the person was saying and what I fed back to them was, if God sent this pandemic, then God can take it away. Please take it away. It's terrifying. I mean, it must be terrifying for the germaphobe who sits in the White House and people around him have contracted the virus. You can see it. It's hard to see that. Hard for me. Nevertheless, I find solace, my faith, in the fact that Christianity is trans-tragic. This is not the last word on the human condition. It's not the last word. But that doesn't mean we can skip right over to the rapture and solve it when we're dead. That is not the faith in, in this world, not just the faith of this world, but the faith in this world that is in the Gospels. I have found the poems of Mary Oliver on grief and loss to be very important in this time. And here's one. It's called No Voyage. Oh, I go to see the great ships ride from the harbor. And my wounds leap with impatience. Yet I turn back to sort the weeping ruins of my house. Here or nowhere, I will make peace with that fact. I think we grieve the weeping ruins in this life or not at all. Thanks for listening. So, talk